Hey everyone, Sarah here. I am going to be doing a drawing class on anime characters today. So um, we are trying a new lighting situation and I have very exciting news. Uh, tonight I have scheduled um, a new internet hookup so it's going to be much faster. I'm very excited about it because hopefully this will fix some of the lag problems I've been having. So welcome and um, let me go ahead and get started and talk to you about the supplies that I'm going to be using. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got um, a pencil set. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a fancy pencil set. I use this um, because sometimes we do darker shading and it's a lot easier to use some of the tools in here, but you can actually use a number two pencil. Um, here's another version, like an art version of the number two pencil. It's called an HB. So HB is the same thing as number two. So you can definitely use those and I will, throughout the drawing, explain what you need to do if you are using a number two pencil. Um, what I have here in the box, and I'm using the, uh, it's the Koei Noor is the brand, Giaconda um, art set. Let's see, so we've got pencils and sticks. So those are like the basic drawing utensils, but we also have a spreader, which is just newsprint that's been wrapped very tightly into like a pencil shape. And we use that to spread uh, the pencil and get it more evenly distributed. Then there's a kneaded eraser, and kneaded just means that you can, you can actually break pieces off if you need to. Um, you can mold it if you need a really tiny point, you can do that. So that's really nice. I also like to have a backup rubber eraser of some kind because um, sometimes if you need to erase out a lot of stuff, the rubber eraser actually works a lot better. Kneaded eraser I find is better for smaller areas. Okay, so in the pencil set, I've got sepia tone. Sepia just means brown. Um, it's kind of a reddish brown. I've got sepia tones. We won't be using those today. Um, I, I have everything that I have in pencil form. I also have the um, stick version of it. Uh, so I've got the sepia tones here. I have graphite pencils, which is mostly what we'll be using today. I have lead pencils, which gives you just a slightly darker uh, version of the, the shading. And then I have charcoal, which gives you the darkest shading. We may be using some of those others today, but like I said, you can use a number two pencil and get the same drawing. Um, it, can, it can still be effective. Okay, so that's the pencil set. I also have a, a drawing pad. Now I like to use nine by 12, but um, you can use other sizes as long as it's rectangular, you can even use, you know, the eight and a half by 11 um, copy paper, you know, printer paper is fine. So I'm going to be using this. Now today I'm going to be doing two different things. I'm going to, normally I draw just whatever the drawing is, whatever the subject is, I just draw that. But today we're doing anime characters and let me go ahead and correct myself. I actually did this intentionally. But if you notice, the title says basic anime characters. But in reality, since we're drawing it, it's actually called manga. So manga is um, Japanese comics. Um, it's like a, a Japanese like graphic drawing. Anime is the animated version of those drawings. So it's an so anime is animated manga. So basically if you're referring to something that is still like a drawing, it's manga. And if you're referring to something that is going to be animated and moving, it is anime. So I put anime in the title because I wanted to, um, it's more because I think that's the, the common term, even though it's a little bit of a misnomer. So I use that, but in reality, um, we're going to, I'm showing you how to draw uh, manga characters. Now, Manga characters are known for their um, expressiveness and they're known for, you know, using very little 
to make extremely different looks. So um, you can completely customize it, the shape of the nose, the shape of the mouth, the size of those things, the, the eyes. Um, there's four basic components to a manga character, and that is the face, the hair, the clothing and accessories, and then the expression, the exaggerated expression, the emotions. So um, we are not going to be doing a whole lot with expression today. I mean, you can, you can, you can create a character that has a specific set expression, but because we're doing manga and not anime, we're not drawing more than one. So um, you just, you will choose one look. Um, the with the eyes. In Japanese culture, eyes are considered to be um, a, a place of beauty. Like that's that's where your beauty kind of comes from is your eyes. So that's why you see in a lot of uh, manga and anime, you see very big, expressive eyes. Uh, so that's what probably we're going to focus the most on today because it has the most detail. Also hair. Hair tends to be whatever goes. And... Um, What's great about that is that with hair, you can have a lot of different colors. Now, we're not working with color today, but if you have colored pencils at home, you can go in later and color in your characters. Um, I highly encourage it because manga is very vibrant with color. Um, color can actually be representative in a lot of ways. So even though we're not working with it, I encourage you to go and, you know, make the hair on your character blue or pink or, you know, something fun and wild. Um, hair shape also can kind of go any direction. So typically you see a lot of long hair, um, but it, it really can, it, anything goes. So you can have like short spiky hair, you can have like cropped hair, whatever. So we'll talk about that as we go through, but so eyes and hair are probably what we're gonna spend the most time on. I'm only doing an upper torso character. So um, we're not gonna focus too much on clothing. I will talk a little bit about it when we get to that part but um, we're not gonna get too fancy with the clothing. Today, we're mostly gonna spend time on the face, specifically the eyes. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I was telling you is I'm going to, I'm gonna just take a sheet of paper. I'm going to be drawing the character that I wanna do, plus I'm going to be giving you some um, examples of the characteristics. So like instead of just drawing one eye, I'm going to be drawing several eyes so that you get an idea of what to draw. Um, so you can actually customize your character so your character doesn't have to look just like mine. So we're going to be starting with our 2B pencil. And I'm running out of space on the my desk now. So let's see. Well, I had some snacky apples here, but I guess those are going to have to go because I don't have room to set my pencils down. All right. One moment. Okay. We are set. So let's starting with our 2B pencil, we're going to actually draw our face shape. Now, what's interesting in uh, manga is that different face shapes can actually represent different ethnicities. For the most part, your Asian ethnicities are going to have a pointed chin. Um, and this kind of represents the receding chin that is, is typical in a lot of um, like like the Asian faces. If you have a broader chin um, and like more square jaw, that usually represents a Caucasian um, in, in manga or anime. So uh, we're going to be focusing just on the, the pointed chin today. 
But that's why why you see most of your Japanese characters in manga and anime have that pointed chin. Okay, so I'm going to start with a circle. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. In fact, mine is a little bit off there right away. I'm just going to use my eraser. Now, you do not have to erase necessarily. I erase out because I want you to see kind of like the, the ideal. So, and remember, whenever you erase, I say it every time, always blow, do not brush. Because if you brush away, then it can smear your drawing, especially if you're working with uh, higher pencil like higher numbered uh, B pencils like I have a 2B but if you're working with like charcoal or like a, um, a lead it will smear very easily so always blow your your eraser shavings all right so you have your circle and now we are going to draw a pointed chin now if you're drawing a female this is important if you're drawing a female your lines are going to come down and then come to a point and this gives a more heart-shaped face if you're drawing a male it'll just come straight down so I'm going to draw a female so my lines are going to come down and then come into a point okay now I'm gonna draw the male over here just so you guys get a look So you notice the male has like, it's a little bit like that alien head, you know, that you see a lot, but of course the head is much bigger. So in this case, it's not quite that way, but, but see how this just comes down to a point and this comes down and then comes slopes to a point. So just a little bit different in the way you draw male and female faces. All right. So I'm doing a female today, but I will show you some different options on this paper over here. All right. So. Uh, first thing is we are going to draw two circles uh, for our eyes. Now, oh, hi, welcome. So typically men have bigger jaws. That's true, but for some reason in manga, like they tend to have, well, and I mean, I guess every manga, uh, artist is going to be slightly different and this is probably you know it changes there's exceptions but typically you will see the men will have like a more narrow um jawline in manga but yes in general men do have bigger jaws it, it is kind of a weird like in real life IRL <laughs> okay so um Oh, eyes. I was on eyes. Okay. So the width between your eyes, and this is actually true for real faces, the width between eyes is approximately the size of one of your eyes. So if you take your fingers and go and like, and actually, you know, put them on either side from the corner of one eye to the, cor uh, the corner of the eye to the other corner and hold it in the middle, it should go between the two corners. Very interesting proportion. Um, that's something that you can use with regular proportions, not just manga, but it is true in manga as well. So I'm going to draw two circles. So I'm going to have like kind of a, a fake circle in the middle, which will be erased almost immediately. But just to give my idea. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up so you guys can see my fake circle in the middle. See, it's very, very light. And then I'm going to erase it immediately because <laughs> you don't need it there after it's just there for the initial drawing. <sighs> okay. Now we are going to, we're going to save our eyes for a little bit because remember I said that has the most detail in manga. So we're going to actually um, draw the nose next. All right, so you have several different options for the nose. Now, I want you to consider something. The more serious a character in manga, the smaller their features are, like in their nose and mouth. Um, I'm not actually entirely sure why this is, but it's just kind of a common 
thing where if they're very serious, they have very small features. So keep that in mind. Um, you want to know basically the backstory. You can come up with a backstory for your character. You know, what does your character do? Um, what are they known for? You know, what are their personality types? And that will help you design the character. So here are the noses. I'm just going to make a little box and I'm going to write nose at the top. Okay, so here are some different noses you can do. Um, you've got, I'm going to do little nostrils and then a little tiny connecting line. So hold that up. You can do just a very simple slant and bend. Okay. You can do, um, I call it the triangle nose, but basically it is, you've got like a kind of a, what is that, isosceles? Man, this is bad. I used to teach math. I should know that better. Okay, um, so you've got a, a little triangle on that side that's tilted, and then you have just a slit nostril on the other side. Okay, you can have just a little dot. It's a very serious character. It's just a dot. Um, you can do, let's see, you can have like the curve of the nostrils where it comes down, uh, where the, the bulb of the nose is right here. It has like a little drop for the bulb of the nose. You can do kind of a, a version of this triangle that I did, but instead you have your nostrils down like that. Uh, let's see, a, like a longer version of the triangle. And let's see, then you can do like um, a little bit more of a comical character. I just have two lines and then you get the shape of the nostrils, but you have a little bit more exaggerated shape of the bulb of the nose. So I'm holding these up so you can see them. So here are some different nose shapes you can choose from. All right. I'm going to choose I think I'm going to do this simple like just angle. And where you want that to be is right below the the bottom of your circle. So that's going to come down uh And depending on what you want your character to look like, it can be very long or not at all. I'm not doing a very long nose. I'm just going to do a short one. So pick your nose. Ha! <laughs> I said pick your nose. And uh, go ahead and draw that on your face. Now, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to go ahead and start setting up for the mouth. Because the mouth can either be very expressive or um, like, again, if it's a very serious character, it would be very small and uh, <coughs> not very much expression at all. However, um, the mouths tend to be very simplified. There's not a lot of detail to the mouths in manga. So, so I'm going to start drawing those. You can always pick something different too. You don't actually have to do the noses that I have here. If you have maybe seen something that a nose that you like, it's really good to always have a reference photo. Speaking of reference photos, I usually mention this at the beginning of the stream, but I completely forgot today. Um, if you look right here where I'm pointing at the bottom of my screen, 
there is a Discord link. That link goes to my Discord server and everyone is welcome to join. And I encourage you to join because I do post reference photos. Every time I have a class, I post a reference photo out there first so that you have something to look at. So I did post a couple of anime um, character examples out there for you to look at. Um, so you can see like an overall look and maybe that'll give you some ideas. But it's always good to have some kind of reference photo. So, you know, look up manga and see what you find. You know, maybe you'll find a character you really like that look or maybe parts of that look. So you can make up your own features. Let's see. So what I'm doing now is I'm drawing the mouths and I've got um, a very simple mouth where you have your lip shape. You know, everybody kind of knows that uh, mountainous like M shape and then just a very simple smile line underneath it. Um, a basic smile line. Again, it's not extremely expressive. It depends on, you know, what you want and uh, what your character is known for. But there's also like a little bit of shadow underneath. That is not a soul patch. Um, that is actually a shadow uh, under the chin. If your character is very talkative or... Um, you know, very outgoing and uh, dramatic. They might have like a bigger mouth. Uh, this is like the bean, I call it the bean mouth. So it's like a little shape like a bean. And it's for a lot of times when characters are laughing or exclaiming and you know, um, so, you know, with manga and anime, when they are, um, they have very exaggerated emotions. So, that can be used for color. Like, say um, a character's angry. They might turn red in the face, you know. Or maybe they're, um, something is very disgusting. They might turn green in the face. So um, color is one way of doing that. Their eyes. So their eyes either widen really big or they shut down really, you know, small if they're like, ah! you know they like they get really tiny and their mouth gets huge or maybe if they're in pain um, their eyes get tiny their mouth gets tiny um, let's see if they're crying uh, their eyes might just become slits but then there's like all this water coming out all of the emotions are exaggerated and there's a really good reason for that um, manga characters are known for being expressive but the like the emotion of the story is told in the face. And so if you notice, a lot of the other features um, outside of the face aren't always as ornate. And that's because the face is what tells the story. The face is what draws the viewer into the emotion of the story. So that's why um, the, the expressions change so drastically and the emotion is so, so exaggerated so that you, you as the viewer, the reader, um, get the idea more easily and you can really connect with the emotion in the character. So, um, I have just a very small mouth that's just a, a little tiny oval. Um, that would be good for a serious character. I have a little wider mouth and there's another version of this. If you have, it looks like kind of like um, the half of a lemon. And I'll show you, that's the mouth I'm gonna be doing today. So the mouth of a lemon, it does have like a little, a little um, shadow underneath. Uh, let's see, we have, you can do kind of a, dimples. So basically it's a little like it's a straight line that has like the the uh, bulb of the lip you've got like a bulb right in the middle of your lip just like your nose um, that is exaggerated a little bit but the rest of it's just a line and then you have your dimples on the side uh, let's see another version similar to this is you can have a very small mouth now I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little shading to this you can see what that's going to look like. So um, all I did was put a little bit of shading in the corner of that is to indicate that the mouth goes further back and that the, the um, character is smiling. 
so um or or not smiling but like ah you know like you can see their tongue so that kind of looks a little like their tongue um all right and then last you can have kind of fat lips And I just did like a little, um, like a large shadow underneath there. And, and actually what that's the shape of is like this right here under the, the chin. All right, so those are our mouths. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing the lemon, the half kind of uh, lemon slice. Now, um, we're gonna add a little bit more detail to the mouth, but let's just go ahead and get your mouth down. Uh, here, I'll hold this up for you guys one more time so you can see both the mouths and the nose. Now, sometimes with like a mouth like this, you might have like a little shape inside of it, which represents the tongue, and then it's all dark around it or it might be completely dark. So in my little half, my little lemon slice there, I'm actually going to be putting like a little semicircle. I'm gonna hold that up so you can see it. And then I'm gonna shade in the rest of the mouth. Oop. My hair wants to be part of the drawing apparently. So I'm just coloring that in, shading that in, sorry, still doing it. I have a bad habit, for those of you who haven't seen previous streams, I have a bad habit of saying color it in rather than shade it in. We're not using color. So just to see what I did is that it gives the illusion of uh, like a tongue kind of in the back, that the, that the mouth is open because my character is kind of um, maybe a little happily surprised, you know, she's, she's a very happy character. Okay, excuse me, just a moment. Still drippy. I feel like whatever this thing, allergy thing will never go away. All right. Next, now we're going to do the eyes. So eyes are very exciting um i'm going to do my best to draw as many eyes as i can for you but of course they're very detailed so i may just draw like the outlines of the eyes for you and let you do the filling in part um so first we need to determine your character's expression are they angry are they um happy are they excited are they surprised you know so are they tired so i'm going to give you some different eyes to choose from okay so first We've got our villainous character or our character that is maybe um, maybe they're just upset. Maybe they're not villainous. They're just upset. It depends on if their eyes are like this all the time, if you draw more than one uh, panel. So a panel would be like these are two panels, right? And I'm about to do a third panel. Um, your story may take place like you have one uh scenario going on here one scene then another scene here are transitions so um from you can do two different eyes indicating that that's not what your character always looks like all right so the villain so first of all you're going to do kind of uh little carrot like like on the computer a little carrot but they're like little um I don't know what those are called, just like little upside down bees. How about that? <laughs> and then underneath you have a curve. And the curve kind of comes in to the, the, to meet the uh, corner of the eye there. All right, so we'll do that on the other side. Now, if you were to leave the eyes just like this, it looks like someone is maybe in thought. Like maybe they're thinking, you know, they're, 
like they're frowning a little bit because so their eyes are a little narrower, but they're thinking. Um, now, if we add little lines underneath the eyes, it gives them a little bit more expression. And we are also going to make this person frowning. So to do a frown line, your forehead furrows a little bit, right? So you get this like, uh, when you're frowning, you get this area in here. So what we're gonna do is uh, an L and a backwards L, like kind of a, an angled L, like that. Okay, now he's still got his eyes closed, so we're gonna give him open eyes. Oh, and you know what? I put, uh, I apologize. Hopefully you weren't drawing this or if you are, I forgot to add the eyebrows, that's kind of important. So uh, <laughs> the guys in manga and anime tend to have thicker eyebrows and the females um, tend to have uh, more narrow and dainty eyebrows. So my character is going to be a female, so I'm gonna give her more dainty eyebrows and I'll show you those in a little bit, but we're, I'm starting with male characters here. All right, so basically uh, for this character, he's gonna have an arch that's similar to his eye shape. So this is what I'm gonna do first. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. You've got like, um, the eyebrows narrow when they get up to the middle. So it might be thicker here. And then as it goes up, let me do it on this side. It's thicker here and as it goes up, it narrows. So it's more like a triangular shape. And we'll color those in, uh, shade them in. <laughs> I'll get it one day, guys, I will get it one day. Okay, now let's do those frown lines. I apologize, those were supposed to go up there. Okay, now we're gonna add in just two little semicircles for the eyes. All right, now, this is really important. So in, in anime and manga eyes, they always have that glint that like they, you see the reflected light in the eye and it's usually exaggerated. So you'll see um, usually one large um, re light reflection and then a smaller light reflection. In kawaii, which means cute basically, um, in kawaii characters, um, you almost always see them in line together. So you have the big, and then the small right next to it. And they're usually in the same direction for both eyes. So you'll, you'll see, you know, the big white circle and then the little white circle. And they're right there next to each other. In um, regular manga, it can look a little bit more realistic um, as far as like, you know, the, the glint in your eye might be a little in a little bit different place. So here, so I always just go ahead and make my circles So I make the circles first. In this particular case, I'm gonna have a little, my circle is a little bit closer to the, oh, sorry, it's not focused. Okay, but a little bit closer to the left-hand corner of the eyes. And then you just color it in, shade it in. Maybe I should just adopt it. Maybe I should just say, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna say color. And who cares if it's accurate or not? You know, just make it, own it, since I, I'm really having trouble changing there. That's actually a really great lesson for you guys. If there's something about yourself that you can't change for whatever reason, don't be ashamed of it, just own it. Just, you know, fully commit to that. I think that's a, so here we go. So I haven't done anything darker yet. 
Like I, I'm like we'll go in and we'll actually do some darker shading later. This is just to get the basic eyes down. But just so you can see the eyes. All right. So that's angry eyes. Now I'm going to do what I call ang eyes. So if any of you are familiar with, um, I mean, these aren't exactly like his, but if any of you are familiar with Avatar, uh, The Last Airbender, he has like, like bigger, more expressive male eyes. So I'm going to do this. So it starts with just two little lines at the bottom for the underneath of the eyes. Then we're going to move to, so it kind of curves over the top part of the eye. It curves over, angles up, and then comes straight down. So like that. Okay. Uh, we will have Again, thick eyebrows. These are very similar shape to the other eyebrows that we have, maybe a little rounded at the end. Okay, I'm, I'm doing expression on these first two and then after that I'm just gonna show you basically where the eyes go. All right, so for this first one, um, so you've got your same half circle. I really need to zoom this camera. Don't know how to work my zoom yet, guys, but I, I'll work on that. Wish it were just like something on the camera itself I could use, but uh, I don't know. All right. This one, the, the white of the eye is going to be almost entirely in the upper left hand corner. You see like that? And then he also has little like laugh lines on the sides like that. So I'm just going to color in these eyes. So as you can see, these eyes look very different from these eyes. You can tell just by looking at the eyes that they're a completely different expression. So this one, he's more friendly, um, more inviting. That's why I call them Ang eyes probably because Ang is very friendly. Um, you know, he just, he's more concerned about you as a person. <laughs> this, this guy is either too frustrated to be concerned about you or he's a villain and therefore you need to be gone. Okay, um, so here's some other eyes. Some more angry eyes. I'm drawing the eyebrows first. I don't know why. One of the hardest things is getting symmetry. So symmetry is when something is the same on both sides. Um, and, you know, getting symmetry can be difficult. Now, okay, I am going to draw in this one. And the reason why is because this guy has a little bit more realistic eyes in that he, um, you can actually see the white of the eyes. So I'm going to do that just to show you guys what that looks like.
I did my eyes a little bit too far apart. But you can see, like you can actually see the white of the eyes underneath. So it looks a little bit different. All right. Uh, now this one, I'm gonna give him like curved eyebrows, but he's gonna have kind of angular eyes. He is concerned, he's very concerned. Hopefully you guys can see okay. This one I'm also going to be able to, I'm going to show you uh, the white of the eye. So this one I'm not doing a second, I'm not going to do the second white part of the eye. Like the little, um, glint the gleam in his eyes he only has one gleam uno gleama i'm just making that up that is not the correct word gleam uno gleama is not i don't think a real word if it is i'm probably completely wrong on it all right so this guy's like a little bit more worried because his eyebrows are more arching and um, these little lines under here, uh, under his eyes are like directly under it rather than to the side. Like this guy looks more angry because his, his line, it's like he's furrowing, just not from the, the top of the brow. All right, let's do some girl eyes. Here, I'll hold these up so you can get a, a look at them. And we're gonna do girl manga. Okay, so girls have a tendency to be less angular. They have more rounded eyes, and of course they have, they'll have like little eyelashes sometimes. So I'm going to do uh, more arched eyes here. And we'll do a little bit rounded underneath. Just a little smile line. Okay, now I'm gonna have my girl, well, I haven't decided actually. Oops, there's no eraser at the end of that. I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna actually bring the corners, the outside corners of the eyes in a little bit and, and draw them in because I'm going to be giving her eyelashes. So you still do your kind of half moon shape here. So her, I'm going to show you, we'll see the white of the eyes for this one. And if ever you accidentally color in your, I'm owning it. If you ever color in your, um, the, the little gleam in the eye, you can use your kneaded eraser to come in and just erase out a tiny little area and then circle back around it. Okay, so let's give her some eyelashes. So how we're gonna do that is we're just gonna scoop out from the side. See how I just made two little dashes right at the edge of her eye. And I'm just gonna fill that in a little bit. I'm just gonna connect them So I just filled it in a little bit. 
All right, we'll do the same with the other eye. So two little kind of scoops out like you normally see in cartoon eyelashes. And then you just connect them like a triangle almost and then fill them in, fill in the corner of the eye a little bit. Now I'm also going to give her little tiny lines down um, at the bottom part of the eye, which hold that up so you can see. See down here, that just indicates like eyelashes at the bottom, bottom lashes. All right, and then we're going to give her very thin curved, like like little, little arches. It is still a little bit more filled at the front than it is the rest of it, but it's not going to be very much. So I just do like a little tiny circular motion with my pencil at the front, like at the, the beginning of the eyebrow closest to the nose. And then I just gradually get thinner. So here are some female eyes. Ta-da! Okay. All right, so now we're gonna do um, a villainous female. So we want, or, or, or she's angry. It's entirely possible. Just because someone's angry doesn't mean they're a villain. They're just upset, you know, it happens. Okay, so we're gonna give her some more angular eyes. So we'll go, let's see. Like, she'll have three points, four if you count the beginning, but one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. And then we are going to do, the eye is going to curve down just a little bit, but then it's going to scoop under and come up to meet It's going to come up to meet the corner of the eye there. All right. Do that again on the other side. So it kind of scoops around. And I did this side a little bit smaller. And it comes up to meet. Now, for this one, it looks like I'm just apparently filling in all the eyes. So forget what I said at the beginning that I wasn't going to fill them in because it looks like that's what I'm doing. Um, it's just hard. It's hard to look at eyes and, and just see them as shapes because they're so much more. All right, let's go ahead and give her eyebrows so we don't forget like I did the other dude. Now hers are just going to be kind of very skinny triangles up. They're not going to curve back down. I think she is a villain personally. See, you can tell just by looking at someone's eyebrows whether they're a villain or not. Real lesson. Okay. That isn't true. Please don't take that to heart. Okay. Now she can have, rather than the L's in the middle, she's just going to have two little lines that kind of curve towards each other. Or not curve, rather. They just angle towards each other, I guess. Okay. And um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and give her the eyes. Let's see. I'm going to give her large gleams. She's angry. This is a very angry woman. Don't mess with her. That's what she's saying. That's what the gleam in her eyes is saying is don't mess with me. Back off. All right. I'm going to color that in. And then... So we've got this so far, but we are going to give her, um, it's like a lash line. <coughs> so we're going to make it kind of pointed out in the corner of her eye. And then we're going to 
thicken the upper lid. So all I'm doing is just kind of making the, the upper part of her eye just a little bit thicker. That's it. So there we go. Then, all right, let's do some happy. Let's do, all right, so we're just going to do a curved line, curved line, curved line, and we'll do angles underneath so kind of like little baskets that's what they look like hold that up so you can see all right we'll go ahead and make the shape of the eye the curve of the eye now this one I'm going to show you guys so this one I am going to do two parts so we are going to shade it but we're going to shade it very lightly um, so let's first give her I'm going to give her very large gleams in her eyes then from that I'm going to do kind of a half moon shape on the left side of the gleam I'll hold that up so you can see so like a half moon shape on the left side of the gleam. Okay. Then I'm going to actually lightly shade in the rest of the eye. So it's not actually the white of the eye. She actually has two parts. So this is we're doing the iris as well. Okay. I didn't give her a second gleam. That's okay. So as you can see, I just shaded in the rest of it, but, but lighter than I did that dark part. Okay. Now we are going to give her some little eyelashes. These are going to be a lot less detailed than the original eyelashes. They're just going to be three little lines that kind of come off of her, uh, come off of the end of the eyebrow. I mean, the eyelash, lash line. My goodness, guys. I'm getting tongue tied today. Okay. So as you can see, just little lash lines. It just do 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 one, two, three. All right. Now, some eyebrows. Uh, let's give her a little bit of a lid line. A lid line is um, that one's a little too high. I started that too high. So lid lines are basically the curve. So like I have very heavy lids, meaning that you can really see the shape of my eye. Um, a lot of, you, you do see a lot of um, Asian women when you look at their faces, you, you can see in their eyes, they don't have as heavy of lids sometimes. So that does actually create a facial characteristic. Um, so we're going to actually give her lid lines. Just It indicates that crease in the lid. And then we are going to give her nice curved eyebrows, but they will be a little bit angular. Just a little. They are going to angle down. They won't be just straight lines like this other one. Now these get thicker towards the middle rather than towards the outside, like boomerangs. Is what they look like so if you've ever seen a boomerang they get a little thicker in the middle please feel free to ask any questions if you have any I am um, not a fan of that right right brow there but it, it'll do so um, But yeah, please feel free to ask me questions in chat. I look over from time to time to make sure that I'm answering everybody's questions. So um, if you have any about what we're doing, please, it, it's not a problem. It's not a bother to ask. 
treat this like you would a live class, you know, an actual face-to-face -face class um, where you had an art teacher, you know, that you could ask questions. All right. So the last eyes can actually, I'm going to do, can actually be male or female. They're going to be kind of tired, weary eyes. And that's just to give you the look of what that would look like. Um, all right. So I'm kind of curving around the corner of the eye and they're, they're a little angular. I'm going to show you. Okay. So you can see they, they do kind of, you do see the corner of the eye on the right, the outside. They're going to have lines that go straight across and maybe curve down a little bit. So they're slightly curved down, convex. So you can see that they've got just a tiny, it's just a tiny little hill. Okay. And there's going to be a line underneath the eye. Like it's just a straight line. It would, it's going to indicate like basically bags or um, dark circles under someone's eye. Let's go ahead and get the eyes in there, like the actual eyeballs. Okay. So this one, I'm not going all the way out and you can see some of the white of the eyes. <coughs> There's like a, a lid line above. I'm going to give very, they're going to be a little bit higher and I'm going to do very simple, just lines for the, um, eyebrows. And they're going to be a little bit higher because it's like they're arched a little bit. Like someone's giving you a weary look, you know, they tend to, their eye, their, it's almost like a frown, but instead of in the middle, their eyebrows go up. Okay. Um, they're going to have little creases on the outside, but these are not laugh lines. Unfortunately, this person is not laughing. They're kind of tired lines. And then last but not least, we're going to do a little bit of color underneath, just very light shading underneath. Now this can sometimes show embarrassment. If you've got a character, um, and they show embarrassment underneath. I think I did these, um, lines a little bit too low, but you can, you get the idea. So these, this little shaded area down here can either show embarrassment or it can show weariness. You know, someone is very tired. All right, now I got to pick the eyes for mine. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to do some simple shapes so that, let's see. So I'm going to draw like a kind of my arch over the eye like that. And I'm going to come down. We've got our smile line underneath like the bottom of the eye so I'm just like filling in the detail of that that eye shape that I had before um let's see I'm gonna actually use the reference photo I'm gonna I like her eyes a lot so she, you can actually see some of the white of her eyes. I'm going to erase out this um, head shape now that I have it, like the, the circle head shape. And if you've got extra eye that goes above your eye shape, you can erase that out. Okay. I accidentally erased a couple of my lines, so I just fill that in. Okay, so my character, I can see the white of her eye underneath. And 
I'm going to give her two gleams, a little smaller gleam. Shade that in. Well, now I get it right. See, as soon as I gave up on trying, now I'm getting it. It's the way it always works. So my character is very happy and outgoing and friendly. That's my backstory. She's, she is, um, she likes to just walk up to people and start a conversation and see where it takes her. That's what my character likes. I think my character's name is going to be Emmy. All right. So, um, you don't have to name your character, but you can. So let's see, I'm going to give her kind of simple eyebrows. So they're just going to be curves, but I am going to make them a little thicker towards the front of the brow. That is too thick, too thick. It's okay. Cause she'll probably have some hair in her face too. That's after we get to that. The hair is next. Okay. Yay. Okay. So my girl has very big eyes and, uh, very gentle sloping eyebrow shapes. Okay. Now, uh, let's see, what are we missing? So you could like, my girl could be like a little bit, she could have a little sun on her cheek or it'd be like a little bit blushing. Um, maybe she's a little embarrassed. I just, I'm going to give it her a little, A little flushing in the cheek. All I'm doing with my eraser is that my shading was just a little heavier than I wanted. So I came in with the eraser and just dotted on it. And when you, you just kind of dot like that, it only takes a little bit of it out. Okay. So let's start with the hair. Now, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to draw examples of the hair on here. Um, I guess I should hold these up so that if you're still working on eyes, you can see some of the examples, but I'll continue talking about the hair. So hair, a lot of times is very spiky. There's a lot of lines in it. Um, and you see a lot of definition in the hair. Like I said before, you can have color. If you've got colored pencils, I encourage you to go later. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of manga characters have bangs. So we are going to, I'm going to give my girl bangs, but I encourage you, even if you're doing a male character to continue to, to do the same, to give like the, they're going to be kind of jagged. You'll see. All right. So let's go ahead and do some bangs. All right. So first things first, you've got two sections of your hair. You have the part that frames the face and then the part that goes behind you, like in, in manga. So the part that frames the face, um, I'm going to do, I just do kind of a rainbow like arch that comes out a little bit from the face like that. Then you're going to have spikes that come in like that. And then you've got, let's see, I'm going to have another spike come down her face and it can come over the eye or the eyebrow. And all of the spikes on the left side have a tendency to curve towards the, they, they all curve towards the middle of the face. So the, everything on the, the left side kind of curves to the right and everything on the right side kind of curves to the left. 
like as far as the way the point goes at the bottom. And you want to make these, well, you don't have to. You can make them all the same or you can make them all different sizes. I like to do mine different sizes, which makes it look like a little bit more jagged. As you get towards the middle, I'm going to have one that comes down like that. Ta done. All right. So now, depending on what you want to do with the rest of the hair, I'm gonna erase out some of the headlines, uh, like basically from the head shape that we did originally. <sighs> now, if you are doing a dude, you've got a guy here, um, his hair may be connected and maybe have, um, here, I'll go ahead on my, guy's face over here. I'll go ahead and do some example guy hair because the guy hair is a little bit different. All right. So I'm going to do my guy, um, is going to have like, it's going to kind of wisp to one side and I'm just starting in the middle. Now, a lot of times you will see longer hair. So kind of curve down around the side of the face. There we go. And then he'll have several pieces that are layered. So it's not going to be all one piece that goes all the way around. You're going to actually have, see how I've got a second layer going here. Okay, so I'm going to race out some of the headline here. Okay. Um, let's see. What, uh, we'll have, let's see, this is going to actually come up a little bit. And I'm going to have it, his hair, because this guy's hair is like curving down. So it's sort of similar to, to the girl, but you just got the pieces are coming down farther on the sides. You've got some wild hair. It's kind of just doing its own thing. Okay. And remember you have you have lots of lines and just go with the shape that's being made so like if the shape is up here in fact, I don't, I'm not gonna do that yet sorry sorry guys all right here's what I'm gonna do I'm erasing out those lines because I want you guys to be able to see the shape of the hair <laughs> my bust Ah, I have to use my finger because it's not. Okay, there we go. Haha, <laughs> just a little sneak that there. And then, um, let's see, he's got a couple layers and then maybe some hair that's like a couple pieces that you can see flowing out from behind like that. Okay, so your guy hair, now you could do short and spiky. In fact, you could do something like this and just you know, continue it down on the side. My, there's two ways to go with a girl's hair. You can make it long and flowy, or you can make it short and cute. I want my character to be short and cute, but, um, in, so there's two ways you can do this. So like I could, I'm going to draw this very lightly. In fact, yeah. Um, you could put like two little rectangles 
and do like a, I'm, I'm gonna put this closer so you can see it. So you could do like little ponytails. That's one version of cute. So I'm gonna hold this up so you can see it. So see, I did it very lightly because I'm gonna erase it. But so you can do cute little like ja uh, jagged ponytails. That's one thing you could do for a girl. Just like in life, girls typically have more things they can do style-wise than guys do. Sorry, guys. It's the way of the world, let me tell you. You can change that, though. You do whatever you want with style. <sighs> okay, we encourage my nephew. He's 10. We encourage him to do whatever he wants to do. He can paint his nails, paint his face, whatever he wants to do. All right, so there is, uh, let's see, if we were gonna do long hair, you might have, like it might kind of bulk out at the top and come down uh, and you have like locks. It's basically the same. You just have like lots of flowing lines. Kind of like I would say, think jellyfish, like think a, a, a jellyfish uh, tentacles or they, they come down in like these long, like flowing lines. Um, so here's, I'm gonna show you just what I did with the long hair. I want you to be able to see it. So I, I kind of boofed it up uh, here and then came down in these flowy waves. Now, my chica, is going to have short, cute hair. Now, I'm not gonna do it too short. I'm gonna do it probably like a little above shoulder length, like a bob cut. Okay, so my girl is gonna come down and very simply I'm just curving down and then just doing kind of jagged edges. And you don't have to go in too far because uh, because I'm we're gonna be putting in their neck. So I'm just giving my girl short hair. She's she's not there's nothing fancy about it. I will Go ahead and give, mm, no, actually, I don't think I need that. I might erase out some of these lines here. So like the lines on the side for her bangs, what I might do is just bring that down with a couple extra lines like that all right uh, let's go ahead if everybody is good on hair hopefully if you're drawing along if you're doing longer hair like I said you're, you're gonna want to do both sides and do flowy and like longer hair on a female tends to flow across the Again, remember everything's very emotional and exaggerated. So think about when you see a model and they 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 have the fan blowing on her and her hair is like blowing out behind her. You know, it's kind of the same thing. Everything's in motion um, with manga and with anime. Like in anime, of course, it's even more in motion because it's actually animated. <laughs> but um, it, it's all about the movement of the drawings. Sorry, there was some extra. <sighs> There's extra erasers bits all over my desk here. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, we're gonna define the, the body. And again, I'm just doing torso today. I will do other anime slash manga um, drawing lessons in the future and where, where we're gonna focus more on the body. Um, in fact, I've actually got a really good mermaid one that I like doing that focuses on the female form 
but it does it with the tail of a fish, so it's a mermaid. Um, but it focuses very much on the female form because females are very interestingly drawn in manga because it's not realistic, but um, but it definitely has a style. So we'll we'll talk about that. I will do that in a future a future lesson. Okay, so right. Um, on either side of the chin, you're going to have a little neck. It's actually kind of long usually. So I'm just doing necklines. Now, manga characters tend to be very slender. They, they tend to be very thin. Um, usually when you have big bulky characters, those tend to be like the sidekick. So the character that's meant to be funny or uh, meant to be like kind of the Hulk like you know, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just beat you up and make you pay. You know, those the the big bulky characters tend to be those. They don't tend to be main roles. So your main roles tend to be very thin and angular and, um, you know, it's the good guy, usually, but it's the good guy. So so we want to make their features a little bit softer, um, but of course they still are thin and um, I don't know, there's like a, a cuteness about them. Okay, so it doesn't help that my character here is very cute. So let's, so you come down and then your shoulders are going to gently slope downward. They don't have very broad shoulders. Um, in fact, I think I'm giving mine a little bit broader than she needs to have. I'm gonna, end this one a little sooner than I draw, drew it originally. <sighs> okay, so they don't have super broad shoulders. Again, symmetry is always fun trying to get it to be the same on both sides. That just takes practice. <sighs> but I mean, look, I'm not getting it and I've been drawing for 30 plus years, so. Okay. So I live near the airport, and I don't know if you can hear it, but it is actually shaking my house. There, there is a very large something or other going over. It sounds like some kind of military plane, so that's fun. Um, but anyway, sorry about that. If that, I don't know how loud that came across, but all right. So um, for a female character, for a male character, you just have your lines coming straight down. For a female character, you're going to have just a little bit where um, the sides of the breasts are. You're going to have just a little bit of a, a bulge. Now, it depends on how old your character is. If they're a young character, they would not have that. It would just be straight down. Okay. So I'm just going to give my girl a really simple shirt because she's just like a regular girl. You don't want their arms to be too skinny. And I realized that I just wiped rather than blow, but you know. Even the best of teachers can be hypocritical sometimes, guys. <laughs> we don't mean to be. All right, so I'm gonna give mine just a simple V-neck. You can get ornate here. Um, in fact, if you look at the character that is on uh, the reference photo, she's got like um, some, her some material that's coming down in waves um, you can get pretty fancy with the clothing clothing and accessories define your character so I'm gonna go ahead and just give mine a little v-neck and then I want to talk to you a little bit about clothing because I'm not focusing very much on it today but I do want to talk to you about the clothing so I gave her a v-neck she's gonna have just a simple curved line on the um, the sleeve that that shows like the edge of the sleeve because she's wearing a short sleeve shirt. And I'm gonna bring my sleeve out just a little bit from her arm so it looks like it's not tight. <sighs> and 
And for me, I'm calling this done. I like this character. I um, We can go in, we can darken certain places, and I'm going to show you that. But I want to talk about the clothes. So clothing and accessories gives you the who and the what of a character. So who they are and what they are. Let's say you have a warrior, for example. So their accessories are going to define what kind of warrior they are. Do they have swords? Do they have guns? Do they have, you know, maybe it's not a regular sword. Maybe it's a machete, you know, um, or a katana, you know, something, you know, you've got um, or a broadsword, you know, you've got all these different things that can describe what your character does. So you want to consider that when you're giving them accessories. Um, you, let's see, uh, say your character is very spiritual or magical. They may have a cape. Um, they may have uh, pieces of material that are constantly like just flowing in midair, which, which is like a sign of um, the spiritual plane. Um, there's a lot of symbolism in uh, clothing and accessories. So think about that. Again, find really good references. You know, what's your favorite anime? What's your favorite manga? You know, go find um, a character that you identify with and that you can maybe mirror some of their um, clothing and accessories. So that's how you get that. Uh, now, let's just take a look. I'm going to grab my, you can continue using a 2B pencil if that's what you're using. I'm going to grab one of my lead pencils. Let's see, I'm gonna grab a two lead. Now, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna darken some of the areas. So I'm gonna darken under the eyes and like the top of the eyes, this is gonna give it a little bit of shadow. And all I'm doing is just kind of filling in. I'm not going all the way so that it, it gives it uh, a little bit more of a shading look. I'm just doing the corners of the eyes. Uh, let's see, let's do this side so we can match. One thing I found is that when you do something on one side, go ahead and do it to the other side because if you keep going, you may forget what you've done. Sometimes you can see it. And see, I almost started drawing on the right side. Um, oh no, that was correct. Um, sometimes you can see, oh, it's much darker here, but sometimes you forget what exactly you did. So it's better to go ahead and, and mirror that right away. All right. I don't know. This left eye is, eh, I don't know. Not as, not as cool as the right eye. I don't know. I'm having trouble. Okay. Um... Uh, some dark lines in the eyebrows. You don't have to fill out the entire eyebrow. And in fact, that will give you a little bit more depth if you don't color the whole thing in, but just do some lines. Um, we can do some shadow lines underneath. So I'm gonna actually come and shade in some of this. And I'm just following some of those lines I made earlier. All that does is just gives me some shadow. I'm using the same kind of jagged shapes that I did before. So I'm not, I'm not going away from the shape that we had. Uh, you, you might have some shadow here. Uh, so like on the, the outside lines of like your bangs that you did, you might have some shadow. You might have, if they've got a part, you might have some lines that come out from the part. And in fact, I'm going to erase, I did kind of a, a full arch. <laughs> I'm going to actually not only give my girls a, a part, but I'm going to actually change the shape now one thing to be aware of when you especially when you start using darker pencils um, is to be aware of the side of your hand where it's placed because you can 
very much ruin a picture. I've done it before. When you do something like this too, what I'm indicating is that her hair isn't blonde, it's a dark blonde because, or a light brown because I'm shading some of it in, which lets the, you know, if I, if I didn't want to use color, this lets the viewer know that her hair is not completely blonde because I'm giving it so much shadow. Now I could just lightly you know, shade everything in, but then it's going to look like a brown. So you just have to consider what, what you want your character to ultimately look like. And then that can tell you what you're going to do. Okay. I am very happy with this. I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see. So if you want to use any of the details that I did, I am going to probably see, I'm going to shade in her mouth just a little bit more. And there you go. That is your first anime manga character. So I would really like to see, I'm going to go ahead and sign it. Always sign in pencil. Um, I really would like to see what you guys have drawn. Um, I'm going to do a couple things. One, I'm going to take a picture of this and I'm going to upload it I'm going to take a picture of both of these and upload it to the, um, uh, the, my discord channel. So again, you see my discord channel in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, please join. That is a permanent link. So please join and upload your photos. If you have them, I've already had a couple people upload, um, pictures that where they had followed along, uh, one, person did a painting and another person did a drawing the drawing that I did last week so I would really like to see what you've got um, or if you have further questions for me that you didn't ask today but I, I really want to see your work I want to see what you come up with because this is fun like especially manga characters are um, they're so customizable and they have so much expression. I really want to see what everybody came up with on their own since yours is definitely going to look different than mine. So um, I'd like to see that. I will upload photos of both of these there. Um, I'm going to continue working just a little bit because I see like some areas where I want there to be a little shadow. So I'm just going to outline um, some of the lines, not all of them. outline the face once you have like the the face that you know you want the shape um, you can outline like the out the outside bits and this is really this is more like inking. So in, in the comic book world, um, you've got different, different um, jobs basically when it comes to drawing comics. So you have your initial drawings, but then you have what's called inking, which is when you go over it and you define the lines more to say, yes, this is definitely the line that I'm going for. And you don't always define every line. Sometimes you leave some, um, out and that's what a very good inker would know what to leave out and what to keep but um, inking just it defines everything so this is where you would come in and see how like I didn't finish going all the way up that line I kind of let my pencil trail off a little I'm not saying I'm a good inker <laughs> I have no skills as an inker however I do know what it takes to be an inker. I just haven't practiced it. So what I do with mine is, um, oh, and I've got a couple places where my eyebrow won't be showing through. 
So I'm just going to erase out those areas. Um, this is just like final detail stuff. Uh, I like to, when I start, I press down harder. Like I give more pressure than when I let up. So I, when I, I let up from, um, I kind of gradually let up, which gives a wispy type of pencil line. And you can practice those. So you can practice like doing a hard line and then letting up. And that gives you that wispy line. Um, let's see, I'm just going to do some harder lines here. Again, I'm just inking. I'm just coming in and saying, yep, this is a definite line. And I'm not coming all the way to the end. And that gives it kind of a more natural hair look. I'm not going to ink the nose and I only did the inside of the mouth and that's because remember your nose and your mouth are less um, like they're less ornate. They have less detail than your eyes and your hair. So I'm not going to um, I'm not going to fill those in. Okay. I think it's good. I can't wait to see if anybody has anything that they want to upload to Discord. When you do, feel free to make comments about what you think you could work on and uh, what you think is working well. I like to do both of those. I think it's really important to give one thing you think is working really well and one thing you think you could, could do in the future when you draw the same thing in the future, what you could do differently. Um, for example, when I look at mine, um, one of the things I would like to work on a little bit more is my hair. I think I'd like to try some different styles, but one of the things that I think is working very well is my eyes. I really think that my eyes are very effective. Um, and I think I chose very good shapes. They match each other. Well, they match the expression of the, of what I wanted, which was a girl that's friendly and outgoing, kind of like me. Um, so, you know, that's the other thing too. Your manga character can be your alter ego, you know? So, um, I'm going to name her. Her name is Emmy. So this is, this is my girl. I'm just going to write Emmy. It's her name. Oh, you guys can't even see that I'm right here. So this is Emmy and I will take pictures of this. I will take pictures of my, um, examples here and so that you will have them if you go out and join my discord server please please try to refrain from saying negative stuff about your own artwork i have some general rules for my face-to-face -face classroom and my number three rule is um no disparaging the artist or the artwork ever like that's really important uh i think we run a positive classroom here and i don't want anybody um saying negative things about their work. So um, only positive stuff and including talking about, you know, constructive criticism, talking about things you could do differently next time is still positive. Um, it's, it's helping you grow rather than just saying this is terrible because this is terrible isn't very effective advice. It, you can't do anything with that. So thank you everyone for joining my stream. Hopefully after my um, very exciting new internet gets installed tonight that I will not have any problems with lag or anything in the future. So future streams should be pretty great. Um, I have, um, I'm doing a class on Valentine's day this Friday, but instead of my normal 6 PM time, I'm going to do it earlier in the day at two because I'm sure some of you lovers out there would like to go enjoy your Valentine's day. While um, I would normally say I'm going to be staying at home, but I'm not. I'm actually going to cook dinner for a friend on Valentine's, and we're going to do our own Valentine's. So um, there you go. Everybody enjoy. We are going to do watercolor this Friday, and I hope to see you. Bye.